If the multiverse theory is correct, ours is not the only one out there. Which is as interesting as it is scary, right? Now, not every scientist is on board with this mind-bending concept. And let's be honest, the idea of actually making contact with these parallel universes sounds about as probable as winning the lottery while riding a unicycle. But hold on tight, because this strange concept isn't just limited to the realms of fiction anymore. Believe it or not, a bunch of scientific theories actually support the existence of parallel universes. And let me tell you, it's a topic that stirs up quite the debate in scientific groups. Now picture this. The universe we live in is mind-numbingly vast. We're talking billions, some say even trillions, of galaxies swirling around, each packed with an almost uncountable number of stars. Some brainiacs studying the universe's shape suggest that its diameter could span a staggering 7 billion light-years. Others even argue that it might be infinite. Could there be more out there than meets the eye? Well, real scientific theories are exploring the possibility of universes existing alongside, beyond, or even mirroring our own. These intriguing concepts of multiverses and parallel worlds often intertwine with other, more familiar scientific ideas like the Big Bang, string theory, and quantum mechanics. In order for us to figure out what's out there, we have to rely on the information we're a bit more confident in, right? Let's rewind the cosmic clock about 13.7 billion years ago. Everything we're able to see today was squished into a minuscule singularity. Then, if the Big Bang theory is to be trusted, it all went boom. The universe inflated with a speed faster than that of light everywhere, within less than a second. The way the universe went pop has led some clever researchers to ponder the existence of more than one universe. They question whether that sudden growth ended everywhere at the same time. While the expansion ceased for everything we're able to see from Earth 13.8 billion years ago, cosmic inflation might still be ongoing in some other mysterious corners. Some theoretical physicists say that as inflation ends in one place, a new balloon universe forms. But here's the catch. You can't just hop from one bubble to another like intergalactic tourists. These bubble universes are expanding indefinitely, and their edges are zooming away from us faster than light can travel. And here's where things get even more confusing. Let's say we somehow manage to reach the edge of our local balloon and encounter the next universe. Well, those same theoretical physicists mentioned that the neighboring universe could be a whole different ball game. It might have completely different laws of physics, making it a bizarre place for us. Following the same idea, some say that in this vast multiverse of bubble universes, there might be other life forms just like us. The problem is, we're getting farther away from them with each passing moment, and our paths will never cross. Other super smart researchers out there are trying to connect parallel universes with quantum mechanics. Now, quantum mechanics is basically the fancy math behind teeny tiny particles. According to it, these particles can exist in multiple states all at once. They call it a wave function that holds all the crazy options. But here's the catch. When we observe these particles, we only see one outcome. It's like the universe keeps playing hide and seek with us. Now there's this theory called the many worlds theory that says, whenever we observe one outcome, another universe pops up where a different outcome becomes real. It's like our universe acts as a giant tree, constantly branching into countless versions of itself. These alternate universes can't mingle though, so you wouldn't even know if there are a bunch of other yous living slightly, or totally, different lives. This many worlds theory is pretty bold, and a bit hard to prove or disprove. And that's not great for science, because scientists love to test and experiment with their ideas. But if there's infinite space out there, why wouldn't there be infinite universes too? Try to imagine the universe as this giant cosmic playground. Some specialists believe that if it's indeed never-ending, then there's only a limited number of ways that its building blocks can arrange themselves. Eventually, they have to repeat certain patterns. If this is true, then it may be possible that somewhere out there, there might be another version of you living the exact same life, even down to what you had for brunch yesterday. Did we ever have any proof of these supposed parallel universes? Well, some say we did. 
Have you heard the tale of the mysterious man from Taured? It's the story of a man that ended up at a Japanese airport saying he was from a totally unknown country called Taured. Now, some folks think it's proof of time travel, while others believe it's evidence he came from a different universe altogether. As much as you'd like to believe the story to be factual, the tricky part is this Torrid place. There's a reason you haven't heard of it. There's no Torrid to be found, whether in the present day or back in the 1950s when this supposed incident happened. After the airport incident, the man just vanished into thin air a day after arriving in Japan. Poof, gone forever. Let's rewind to that fateful day in July 1954 when the man from Torred supposedly landed in Tokyo. Descriptions paint him as a bearded, French-speaking man. Nothing too outlandish so far, right? Depending on who's telling the story, things start to diverge a bit. In one version, when the man hands over his passport to get stamped, the Japanese officer's eyes bulge out. While the passport looked legit, the country listed as Torrid isn't recognized by anyone, including the officer and other officials. Naturally, they take our Torrid visitor away for a little Q&A session. In another version, the man straight up tells the officer he's from Torrid and shows him the passport when he doesn't buy it. Our man from Torrid then started trying to convince the officers that his homeland is the real deal. According to him, Torrid sat snugly between France and Spain and would have been around for about 1,000 years. To prove his point, he even points to the area on a map that matches the Principality of Andorra. Obviously, things took a mysterious turn. The officers decided to hold the man in custody, suspecting he might be up to no good. They put him up in a nearby hotel for the night, but not without stationing two people outside his room to keep an eye on things. Can you guess what happens next? Drumroll, please. When the officers showed up the next morning, ready to continue their investigation, the man had vanished without a trace. No sign of escape, and to make matters even more puzzling, all his personal documents have magically vanished too. What if the man from Torrid was a time traveler, or an intergalactic adventurer? Some have even delved into the realms of science fiction to explain this bizarre event, and you won't believe the number of people on the internet who've latched onto it as evidence for alternate realities. One of the weirdest ideas suggests that the man accidentally stumbled into a parallel dimension and ended up at the Japanese airport. In that parallel universe, there's an Earth just like ours, but instead of Andorra, they call it Torrid over there. Another idea floating around was that the man was a time traveler from the future. Sorry to break it to you, but the most reasonable explanation for the whole story of the man from Tord is that someone's imagination went wild. Since there are many versions of the same story, it's probable people just kept adding outrageous details to the case, to make it more sensational. The whole story simply snowballed into an urban legend, and there's little to no reason to believe we've once seen a time traveler or intergalactic hitchhiker right here on Earth. This is our home planet Earth and its satellite, the Moon. Zooming out, and here's our solar system. A bit more, the Milky Way galaxy. And we're a small dot among an infinite number of stars. Now, even farther out, a cluster of galaxies. Dots and swirls in the endless space. Further, there's Laniakea, supercluster. That little dot here is our galaxy. Moving on, Hydra Centaurus supercluster. Huge clusters comprising thousands of galaxies are no more than a speck from here. Next, Pavo Indu supercluster. This is an area 200 million light years wide. We can zoom out until we see the entire observable universe. Each little dot in here actually contains thousands of galaxies and quadrillion stars. Scientists speculate that our universe may look like a bubble, and that bubble might collide with another universe. Yes, other universes could exist. Actually, even a whole infinite number of those. All of them could have appeared after the Big Bang. The collision between them isn't impossible either. At least, it might have happened before. And the proof is here, in the direction of the constellation Eurydinus. This place is called Eurydinus Supervoid. It's about 1 billion light years wide. By comparison, the width of our entire galaxy is only about 100,000 light years. There's absolutely nothing in this place, and it may be a trace from an old collision between our universe and another. Scientists think they were passing by each other. 
when the distance between them was minimal, the gravitational forces of the bubbles began to pull toward each other, just like two drops of water trying to connect when they're close. But the speed of the universes was too high for them to continue interacting. So the other universe just tore out a piece of our bubble. There might have been about 10,000 galaxies in that void, and all of them were either destroyed or taken over by the other universe. Let's travel to the edge of our universe to see how this collision might have taken place. We're 10 billion light years away from our home. Here, in another galaxy, we see amazing nebulae of different colors and shapes. And if you look in the other direction, there's a huge wall moving at us. All these bright sparks on it are enormous galaxies about to collide with us. But in fact, it's a humongous mirror that only reflects our universe. Here, space-time is distorted and begins to be pulled into another universe at a tremendous speed. The usual law of physics may simply stop working at this point. Gravity may disappear, and with it, all the stars would explode and people on the surface of planets would hang in weightlessness. But if the universes didn't go at a tangent but crashed directly into each other, things would be much scarier. The enormous amount of collision energy would probably cause an incredible explosion. Its force would simply destroy everything in our bubbles. Still, the two bubbles might begin to merge, too. At first, all galaxies at the edge of the universes would be torn apart. But then, the merger would begin. The galaxies would start moving chaotically. They would fly past each other, break apart, collide, and explode. The collision of two galaxies is an accident of enormous proportions. And it might happen to our home quite soon, in space terms. The Andromeda galaxy is heading our way. It's a spiral galaxy about twice the size of ours. And there are about a trillion stars there, which is twice more than in our Milky Way. At the very center of this bright galaxy lurks a dark beast, a black hole. Its weight is two and eight zeros of the sun's mass. Red giants hundreds of times larger than our sun. Pulsars emitting enormous amount of energy like spotlights. Rogue stars and many large and small black holes. This soup of dangerous objects is moving toward us at 68 miles per second. A trip to New York to Los Angeles at that speed would only take half a minute. The disk of Andromeda can already be seen with the unaided eye on moonless nights. As time goes on, it'll get even bigger. As Andromeda gets closer to us, its gravitational force will begin to stretch the arms of our spiral galaxy. It'll begin to unwind. The stars and planets will lose their orbits. One possible scenario is that an unknown asteroid, or even a dwarf planet from the Andromeda galaxy, will crash into the Earth at an incredible speed. Our planet will explode just like a balloon from this impact. Oh, goody. Another option involves stellar collisions. Our Sun would face another star. The bigger star will slowly begin to consume the smaller one. First, it will steal the light upper layers from it, and then it will eat it just like spaghetti. Or even like rigatoni. When a large star reaches its critical weight, it will burst. This explosion will destroy everything around it, including our solar system. Perhaps the shockwave will even reach other neighboring stars. Yet another scenario is that our solar system will be thrown into dark space. Imagine a tennis ball tied to a rope. You take the rope and spin the ball over your head like a sling. Then you let go of the rope and send the ball flying. This is what will happen to the sun and all the planets around it. We'll find ourselves in dark and cold space. But life on Earth will not be affected. We'll still have our bright star to keep us warm. The only disadvantage is that all the stars in our night sky will disappear. And the most likely possibility is that the merger of two giant galaxies will have no effect on us at all. The thing is, the distance between stars and planets in space is enormous. So they can all just mix together and form one giant cloud. It would be like shoveling fine sand through a big sieve. The objects won't interact with each other. But the most interesting thing will happen to the black holes in the centers of our galaxies. Right now, there's a dense cluster of stardust and stars around them. As Andromeda and the Milky Way come closer together, they will begin to dance with each other. Gee, will it be the twist or the foxtrot? And when the black holes get close together, they'll begin to swallow all matter around one another. Billions of tons of colored stardust, asteroids, and star particles will fly toward the very center of either black hole. 
It might seem like this process happens very slowly, but it's an illusion. Super heavy objects like black holes warp the space time grid, so time is much slower near black holes. And all objects that seemingly stay on the event horizon for weeks or even months are actually long gone. When the black holes finally come together, they merge into one supergiant black hole. But its mass is slightly less than the combined mass of the two dark monsters. Some of their weight is transformed into collision energy. This energy is released so strongly that its waves can be felt in other galaxies. Now, a huge black hole gathers all this dense and hot core of the two galaxies around itself. At some point, the black hole feels full and throws out powerful jets of energy into space. This is called an active galactic nucleus. It's one of the brightest phenomenon in the universe and the most powerful source of electromagnetic radiation ever known. These jets may be more than 5,000 light years long. By comparison, the distance from Earth to the nearest star, Proxima Centauri, is only 4.2 light years. And the explosion that accompanies the jets has the power of 100 supernova explosions. Wow, blows my mind. The blast wave from this event could even reach the edges of a new galaxy. And this outburst would be visible from millions of light years away. Now, there are dense clouds of multicolored dust at the center of merged galaxies. The weight of these clouds is so great that they begin to shrink and take on a round shape. Gradually, they become so heavy that they compress the core and nuclear reactions start inside them. The temperature begins to rise and soon, boom, there's a supernova. It's a veritable fireworks show at the center of the galaxies. Stars erupt from the fog and form new hot worlds. At this point, the arms of the two galaxies that were previously pulled out slowly return to their former shape. The super-heavy center of our galaxy has such a gravitational force that it affects stars and nebula hundreds of thousands of light years away. The galaxy's arms twist again, and we see the new and finished galaxy, the Milkomeda, or Milkdromeda. Hey, how about the andro milky meda way? Blah blah blah. Well, that's hard to say. So, imagine that chat GPT will start perceiving itself as a person and will feel emotions in a few years. Many people are afraid that it will want to take over the planet. However, this fact won't be as important as the question people will start asking themselves at that moment. If humanity has created a machine with self-awareness, then could it be that humanity was also created artificially? Now, artificial intelligence lives on the internet, computers, and in digital reality. But what if we also live inside a huge, powerful computer? What if our universe is just a simulation? The most extraordinary thing is that some facts seem to point to this. There's a whole science in the world that studies this theory. It's called information physics, and it assumes that time, space, and matter are not fundamental natural phenomenon, but bits of information. This information forms a picture that creates the laws of physics for us. For example, we feel cold and warm not because atoms get cold or warm, but because their movement accelerates or slows down. The speed of particles can be like bits of information. Billions of them could form the picture of reality. Once, philosopher Nick Bostrom said that an advanced civilization could create such complex technologies that simulations of these technologies would be indistinguishable from our reality. And Elon Musk said in 2016 that we were most likely in a simulation. Wow. The laws of physics resemble a giant code that programmers write when creating apps or games. For many of us, all these complex trigonometric equations and formulas of the laws of physics are too complicated. Tell me about it. But scientists who understand this issue see that the principal workings of these laws are beautiful, and this may suggest that someone deliberately created this beauty. Virtual worlds, apps, or games are based on information processing. If you delve into this information, you'll see that it consists of bits and pixels. Any picture on your phone screen is pixels, and any file transfer process is based on bits. They add up to bytes, kilobytes, megabytes, and so on until a bigger picture is formed. And if our life is a simulation, it must also consist of bits. In our case, pixels and bits are atoms and other particles that make up our universe. 
There are processes inside your computer and phone with maximum speed limits and computing power. If you start exceeding it, then your device will start working more slowly. So, in our reality, there is also a maximum speed limit. This is the speed of light. When an object starts moving almost as fast as the speed of light, time slows down for that object too. Also, time flows more slowly near a black hole. This object with an unimaginable gravitational mass can be something heavy that overloads the processor's computing power. There's also such a thing as quantum entanglement, in which two particles can be connected even though they're far away from each other. Electrons travel around an atom. They are connected. And if the property of one changes, the second one will react. And even if you place these electrons on different sides of a galaxy, they will retain this connection. How is this possible? Scientists don't know. A double slit experiment is one of the most famous experiments that hint that our world is a simulation. The existence of this experiment can be reduced to a simple thesis that the world exists only when we look at it or interact with it through touch, hearing, and other senses. So imagine that you've launched a new game on an old computer. Sometimes the game map freezes. In the game, you turn to the left and see how the mountains and the roads are getting loaded. Then you turn to the other side and the same thing is happening there. In other words, the world in the game only loads when you look at it through the eyes of your character. This is necessary to facilitate the work of the processor. It's much more efficient to get a piece of information about the world when you look at it than to keep the whole world running simultaneously. Remember this. And now let's move on to the experiment. So you have a device that fires small balls of light, photons. You release photons from the device and they crash into a blackboard, leaving white traces on the black surface. Now, put a wide plate with a little vertical slit on it between the device and the blackboard and fire photons again. The balls start crashing into the plate, but some of them fly through the thin gap. They smash into the blackboard and leave a vertical white mark on it. Everything looks quite logical. But now, cut another slit with the same length and thickness in the plate. You release photons toward the plate. Some of them fly through the two slits. What do you think the trace on the board should look like? Two white vertical stripes, right? Well, take a look at the board. It's covered with many vertical lines. When photons pass through the plate, they acquire the properties of a wave and crash into the board, leaving a strange trail as if they've passed not through two, but through ten slits. So at what point do they change their trajectory? Let's take a look. So you stand between the board and the plate to see how particles turn into a wave. The device releases photons. They are passing through the two slits. Nothing unusual. There are two vertical traces on the board and no waves. You close your eyes and release photons again. This time, they behave chaotically and leave many lines on the board. That is, their behavior changes depending on the observer. When you look at them, they behave logically. But when you don't look, the laws of physics seem to stop working. Does it remind you of anything? It's like you're playing a game and looking at the world around you, which is loading. But if you don't look, the world stops working. Scientists still don't have a clear explanation of why particles behave differently when there's no observer. Hey, maybe they're shy. And this is not the only mystery. In the world of quantum physics, many laws of nature don't work. This is a science that gets more questions than answers every year. If we imagine our universe as a large hologram, then quantum physics would be its program code. What if people someday understand this code and learn to change it? This would allow us to transform space, time, and matter. The whole reality could be rewritten. Does the code say that material objects can exceed the speed of light? We would rewrite it and make the speed limit 100 times higher. Does one hour last 60 minutes? What if you change one line of code and make one second as long as one year? A few software changes in the laws of physics would make it possible to turn snow into gold and the ocean into powdered sugar. The whole universe would turn into a vast playground. It seems cool at first glance, but people would probably lose control soon. The universe would be in chaos. And the beauty of our world is in the order that exists here.
Now let's go back to artificial intelligence. Suppose its power reaches the level of the human brain, and it will become aware of itself. In that case, it won't come as a shock to it because it will most likely know the history of its appearance and stages. But how will we react if people discover they are a computer program? A computer program is too simple a word. A human is a complex, intelligent, multifunctional organism that experiences emotions, contemplates beauty, has abstract thinking, and much more. The term creation is more appropriate here. It won't matter if we were created artificially, because our creation will still be beautiful and complex. Besides, remember that good video games or apps can be made only if developers love their creations. Black holes tearing apart enormous stars, pulsars spinning at incredible speeds and emitting powerful beams of energy, colorful nebulae with fireworks of newborn stars, galaxies of every possible color and size. All of these are found within our universe. But it's not infinite. It has a boundary, a literal wall. And beyond that, there's an absolute nothingness. Right now, we're going to make a journey to that wall. But first things first, our universe is like a humongous nesting doll. If you open it up, there's a smaller one inside. It's a galaxy. Inside that is an even smaller doll. That's our solar system. And the smallest doll of all is the Earth. Each of these dolls has boundaries that we are going to cross. For that, we'll need a spaceship and a big one. It also has to be able to move a hundred times faster than the speed of light. You get on board and start the engines. 62 miles above sea level is our first boundary. That's 10 times higher than passenger planes fly. This point is called the Kármán line. It separates the atmosphere of the Earth from outer space. Now we fly further to the edge of our solar system. We turn on the hyperdrives and fly past Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. We've traveled a distance of 100 astronomical units. One AU is the distance from Earth to the Sun. And here's the boundary of our solar system, the heliosphere. Here, the speed of the solar wind decreases rapidly. First, it drops from 620,000 miles per hour to the speed of sound. Then, there's a layer called the heliopause. This is where the wind almost vanishes. And then, our ship experiences a bow wave. This is where we feel the force of the interstellar wind, which collides with the boundary of our solar system. When you pass this boundary, you find yourself in the dark of interstellar space. And here, you can find two human-made objects that made this trip for the first time in history. They're Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Voyager 1 crossed that boundary in 2004. Voyager 2 did it in 2007. These space probes discovered that the heliosphere is not a perfect ball around the sun. Its southern boundary is 10 AUs closer to the star than the northern one. So, we're moving in interstellar space and will soon approach a stone wall around our solar system. 200,000 AUs further, and there it is. This wall of rock is the Oort cloud. In fact, it's a pile of asteroids that surround our world. Scientists speculate that the Oort cloud could be the source of comets and meteorites that fall to Earth, but they're so sparse that we easily fly between them. Now we're in complete darkness. The Milky Way is about 106,000 light years wide. In a conventional rocket, it would take billions of years to fly across that distance. But you throttle to the max. You masterfully fly past the stars and planets as if on a racetrack. And within minutes, you're at the edge of our galaxy. There's no more interstellar wind. All you see are bright dots somewhere in the distance. These dots are huge galaxies. We need to look at a map to make a route to the edge of our entire universe. You're here, near the Milky Way galaxy. It's part of a cluster of galaxies called the Linnea Kea Supercluster. But even this huge thing is like a little street in a big city. Zooming out, we find Hydra Centaurus Supercluster. Thousands of galaxies on the map look like little dots. Maximum zoom out! This is our entire observable universe. We thought it was infinite, but we may have proof that it has a boundary. It's here, 10 billion light years away from our home. Even if you travel at the speed of light, a trip there would take twice as long as our whole planet has existed. During that time, the sun will either fade away or explode like a supernova, destroying our entire solar system. 
And if you can live that long and then return home, you will see that our galaxy is there no more. It's long since collided with the Andromeda galaxy and merged into one big cosmic body. Luckily, your ship is able to warp space-time so that this journey will literally take a few seconds. Boom! Congratulations! You've arrived at your destination, the Eridanus Supervoid. Some scientists believe this location is the evidence of collisions of our universe with something big enough to leave such a large scar. The Eridanus Supervoid is an empty and cold space one billion light-years wide. If you think of this void as a cup, it would fit at least 10,000 galaxies, and it appeared after an accident of gigantic proportions. The object that crashed into our universe was… another universe! Yes, other universes may actually exist. Imagine that our entire universe is a huge bubble that contains all the clusters of galaxies in the observable universe. There could be an infinite number of such bubbles. They could have been born during the Big Bang. These universes may be different from ours. They may have other galaxies and nebulae. But these bubbles could also be parallel universes. This means that if you chose cereal over oatmeal in the morning, in another universe, your twin would choose the oatmeal. Every choice you ever made in life had completely different consequences in a parallel universe. And because the number of choices are infinite, there's a whole infinity of parallel universes. So, like a regular bubble, our universe has a wall that is near the Eridanus supervoid. Long ago, another bubble flew past ours. As they approached each other, their gravitational fields began to interact. Our boundary wall began to deform and pull toward the other universe. The same thing happened on the other side. Then the walls of our universes came into contact. But as these bubbles moved, their connection began to break, and the other universe just ripped a huge chunk of ours. A cold void was formed at the point of collision, and that was the Eridanus supervoid. The problem is that the universe looks the same to the observer, regardless of point of view. For example, imagine a basketball hanging in the air. Now if we put an ant on the ball and tell it to find the edge of the ball, it will start running around it, making an infinite number of circles. But the landscape around the ant will not change. All it will see is a rounded horizon. That's because the ball remains the same from any point of view. The same thing happens to us when we try to find the edge of our universe. All because we imagine the world in three-dimensional space, and our view is limited. For example, you see an ordinary square in two-dimensional space. But if you add depth and change the point of view, voila, it's a cube. If we could see the universe in four-dimensional space, a square might be something completely different. But maybe we can leave our home bubble. The key to traveling to another universe might be inside a black hole. A black hole is one of the most mysterious objects in the universe. They're so heavy, they warp not only space, but time as well. It's like putting a heavy boulder on a net. The net will sag, and the closer you get to the boulder, the stronger the curvature is. Once you're in the gravitational field of a black hole, you can't leave it. We still don't know what might actually be in the heart of a black hole. Some scientists speculate that white holes also exist. Theoretically, they should be born along with black holes. Except for the color, they're the exact opposite of black holes. Nothing can come close to a white hole. At the moment, there's no data on such objects, but general relativity theory suggests they do exist. There's also a theory that a black hole may be a passage to another universe. When you get into a black hole, you can come out the other side, through the event horizon of the white hole. So you bypass the boundary of the universes and find yourself in a completely different world. But we may have proof that a white hole exists. In 2006, scientists discovered an unusual burst of energy somewhere 1.6 billion light years away from Earth. This burst was unique. It didn't look like a supernova explosion or even the merger of two black holes. Some astronomers believe it was the birth of a white hole. But because it was unstable, it was destroyed almost immediately. This process was reminiscent of the birth of our entire universe, the Big Bang. So, scientists called it the Little Bang. Thirteen point eight billion years ago, a mysterious explosion happened in space. It was chaos, a time when the stars, planets, asteroids, the rest of the space bodies, and galaxies were born. It was the Big Bang, a theory we all know about. But no one knows for sure what happened. 
where the universe came from, and what was there before. Some even think the universe went through a cycle where it contracted and expanded several times. In 1991, a cosmologist from Stanford University named Andre Linde had submitted an article with the main idea that there was a possibility the universe had been created in a laboratory. His theory said there was a chance an advanced civilization somewhere out there had created our universe. This civilization has made an entirely new cosmos that later evolved its own planets, stars, and intelligent forms of life. 30 years later, many scientists take this theory pretty seriously. They even started talking about things that we, as a civilization, can do to get to such an advanced level. The theory says this advanced civilization decided to add technology that helped to create a new universe out of nothing. It happened through quantum tunneling. It's when an atom can appear on the opposite side of some barrier, even though it's supposed to be impossible, considering the laws of physics of our world. Like if you wanted to pass a tall wall, but you can't pass it with ladders or go around somewhere. Imagine you can just walk through it like a ghost. In our world, it's not possible, but a more advanced civilization perhaps can do it. Plus, they realized how they could create new universes. Right now, on the cosmic scale, we could be a Class C civilization. We don't know how to recreate some things. For example, conditions on the Earth for when our central star, the Sun, goes out. If we manage to become a Class B civilization, we'll learn to adjust conditions to be independent of the Sun. That means we might be able to learn how to live even without it. And if we level up and become Class A, we'll know how to recreate cosmic conditions and produce our own cosmos in our laboratories. We think of the world we live in through three dimensions of space, east-west, north-south, and up-down. There's also one dimension of time, which means we can distinguish past from future. A fifth dimension would represent one more extra dimension of space. The theory of its existence was first mentioned in the 1920s. It was inspired by the theory of gravity by Albert Einstein, who said space-time is warped by matter and energy. We can't perceive these four dimensions, but we see how an object moves and attribute it to gravity. And maybe there's some other force, like the electromagnetic force, that's more than 1,000 times stronger than gravity that could explain things going on in that extra dimension of space. The fifth dimension is curved in a way we can't see it, but the idea about it was mentioned in a string theory. It considers the universe as really small strings of mass energy, not as particles. They vibrate in 10-dimensional space-time, considering six dimensions are rolled up way smaller than a single atom. That led to the picture of the universe as a 3D island that floats in 10-dimensional space-time. Also, the fifth dimension might be an excellent explanation to tell us more about dark matter. That's the invisible stuff with a mass, but we can't see it, nor can it interact with ordinary matter. And dark matter is 85% of all the matter in our universe. The universe can't be still. It's constantly in motion, either contracting or expanding. We used to think there were 100 billion galaxies, but it turns out there are more than a trillion. The galaxies are moving away from each other. This is what it means when scientists say the universe is expanding all the time. There are voids between galaxies that sometimes stretch millions and millions of light years across. They can seem empty, but they can also contain way more matter than we can find in galaxies. Still, stars usually can't be formed there because the matter between those areas has lower density. But there are still plenty of so-called intergalactic stars. A good example is the Virgo galaxy cluster, 10% of which are intergalactic stars. We don't know how exactly they got there, but there are two possible ways. One, stars can collide, merge, or pass close to another galaxy, which can kick it off from its parent galaxy. Option number two, a supermassive black hole can accelerate a star to very high velocities if they have a close encounter, which can, again, make a star be expelled from its parent galaxy. If you could have a giant magnet, you could even pull something out from the vicinity of a black hole. That's possible if the magnetic field near a supermassive black hole is as strong as the black hole's gravitational field. But it doesn't work if we're talking about material that's already beyond the black hole's event horizon. 
That's a spot with a gravitational force so powerful, not even light can get away. You'd need to accelerate this material to the speed of light, at least, to get away. For that, you'd need an infinite amount of energy. But a magnet could help if something's heading toward the black hole but didn't get inside yet. When someone mentions a black hole, you might get a picture of some giant void in space. But the Milky Way is most likely full of thousands of smaller black holes that float around the galaxy. When a star comes to its end, it will destroy itself in a supernova explosion, which is a cataclysm of energy. In that explosion, the densities in the core will reach an intense enough state that nothing will be able to escape. At the same time, the major part of the star explodes outward, but a part of it collapses inward, creating a black hole. The bigger the star, the bigger the hole. The black hole then swallows everything that comes in its way, including other stars as well. When a star gets sucked up into the black hole, it's ripped apart because of the strong gravity inside the black hole. Some of its parts fall into the black hole, while others get ejected at incredibly high speeds. Some black holes might have been formed in a different way. The early stages of our universe were, to say the least, pretty chaotic. It had high temperatures and pressures, and was in a state that shaped the entire cosmos. Under the right conditions, any old gas patch may have shrunk itself to become a black hole. And they came in many different sizes, from something that weighs a couple of pounds to giant masses like thousands of suns and those in between. They aren't really black. Black holes are areas with strong gravity, and no object can escape when it gets inside. They feed off electromagnetic radiation, such as light and space particles. Since they're consuming matter all the time, black holes give off a dark glow. The Earth is not that close to the inhospitable edge of the solar system. We're the sixth planet from it. Scientists made a pretty cool 3D map of our solar system, where we can see what the edge looks like. It took them 13 years to design it. The boundary is called the outer heliosphere. It marks the area in space where the solar wind, which is the stream of charged particles our sun emits, gets deflected and draped back by the radiation coming from the empty region beyond our solar system. The inner layer of the heliosphere is where the sun and the planets have a rough shape of a sphere, while the outer layer is not that symmetrical. This asymmetry happens because our sun is moving through the galaxy and goes through friction with the radiation in front of it. We fly away from Earth to look at it from a distance. It glows like a holiday tree. Big cities look like yellow spots at night. And during the day, we see strange structures, like a palm tree-shaped island in the UAE, or a dark band that runs all the way through China, the Great Wall. These are traces of human existence. Now let's point our telescope at other planets. Mars? It's just an empty, endless desert. Venus? Only rocks and volcanoes. Even if we look into distant space, all the planets out there are deserted and lifeless. Not a single trace of an extraterrestrial civilization. Many people are convinced that life on Earth isn't unique at all. Here's our galaxy. There are billions of sun-like stars. And here is the entire observable universe with billions of such galaxies. There's an almost infinite number of stars. And near each of them, there may be habitable worlds. But we may not have found life on other planets because it hides from us under the surface. For example, there's Europa, a satellite of Jupiter, slightly smaller than our moon. Its structure resembles a soft-boiled egg. Its surface is a hard crust of ice. But if you take a big enough drill, you can get to the liquid yolk, an ocean of water. Jupiter and its satellites are very far from the sun, so it's quite cold there, about 270 degrees below zero. So liquid water instantly turns to ice. But Jupiter has a strong gravitational force. That causes a lot of friction inside Europa, and its core heats up. The heat melts the ice, and we have a watery ocean under the surface. Water is the foundation of all life, so there could be simple bacteria in that ocean. And who knows, maybe there are other life forms out there. For example, weirdly shaped fish. Because of the weak gravity, their bodies are built differently. Or something like whales feeding on plankton. In 2009, scientists found a planet that is completely covered by an ocean, GJ1214. It's about 40 light years from Earth, and about 75% of its mass is water. Still, the temperatures on this planet are so high that water evaporates and takes the form of super liquid water. There's so much steam that it feels as thick as water itself. 
No life could exist in such conditions. But scientists have recently found at least 24 planets better than Earth and called them superhabitable. These planets orbit distant stars in their habitable zone. It's the sweet spot at a perfect distance from the star. In our solar system, Venus, Earth, and Mars are in this zone. A superhabitable planet must be 10% larger than Earth and have stronger gravity. That way, it can have a denser atmosphere. A temperature 8 degrees higher than on Earth would make the planet more humid. This would encourage a variety of living organisms there. These planets may be great for life, but it's hard to tell if there is life there already. The main marker that would confirm the existence of an advanced civilization there might be radio waves. Imagine a habitable planet similar to Earth. In the process of evolution, intelligent beings appeared there, like humans. They're much taller because of low gravity, and their eyes are adapted to the light from another star, much brighter than the sun. Sooner or later, this civilization will have to use radio waves to communicate with each other. We can think of these waves as loud sound from speakers. Here's Earth. We're now actively using radio waves, and the noise coming from our planet is pretty serious. If a neighboring planet had radio telescopes, big dishes that catch these waves, they would realize that life is blooming here. There are many radio telescopes on Earth that are pointed into distant space, waiting for a signal from aliens. But we haven't received anything yet. Still, that doesn't mean there isn't a planet somewhere in the universe that emits radio waves. It's all about distance. We're jumping 200 light years to another star. Suppose there's a planet X where life exists. The civilization here is advanced enough to use radio waves. So they release the first wave into space. Our radio telescopes won't be able to pick it up until 200 years later. This also works the other way around. Radio communication on Earth has only existed since 1895. Our radio signal won't reach Planet X until 2095. And only then, the aliens will hear our voice. But this radio noise doesn't stay for long. Every year, our technology improves and our radio noise decreases. We're beginning to use mobile communication, cable TV, and fiber optics. This all reduces the volume of our planet in the radio spectrum. And soon, it will simply become invisible to other planets. The same thing is happening on the other side. So, the radio waves coming from civilizations are a brief blip on the cosmic scale. And we can't accept radio silence as proof that extraterrestrial life doesn't exist. A giant telescope, which could take a direct photo of a possibly inhabited planet, would change the situation. We zoom in on the photo, and there it is! We see alien cities with tall buildings and lots of antennas. But now, we can't look that far away. We can take pictures of Mars and its satellites, and even their quality misleads us. For example, Sidonia. It looks just like a human face on Mars. We thought there used to be an ancient civilization there that made some sort of sculpture or memorial. More extravagant theories said it was the remains of a giant human. And there's a whole body of it under the sands of Mars. But in fact, it was just a hill. Strong winds blew out some hollows there. And when there was a shadow in those hollows, we took them for human eyes and a mouth. Or a monolith on Mars' satellite Phobos. We found a smooth rock there that was almost as tall as the Pyramid of Cheops. The news has spawned many theories about the civilization that built it. But it turned out to be no more than a rock. The infinite number of stars and worlds around them almost guarantees the existence of other civilizations. So why wouldn't they come to Earth, right? We think that life throughout the universe develops in similar scenarios. The emergence of simple life forms, followed by evolution and growth of a technologically advanced civilization. But just like on Earth, cataclysms happen there too, causing mass extinctions. Meteorites, for example. Perhaps there was a civilization out there ready to go into outer space, but a huge meteorite, like the one that wiped the dinosaurs off the Earth's surface, made that civilization disappear. And life on that planet began a new cycle from scratch. In addition, the more advanced the civilization, the greater the risk of its self-destruction. Scientists might conduct experiments in machines like the Large Hadron Collider and accidentally create a black hole there. It would begin to swallow everything around it and grow in size. Soon, all the super-developed cities of this civilization and the entire planet would simply disappear. Another possibility for super-advanced civilizations is to travel through wormholes. Those are tunnels in space-time between universes. Aliens might travel through them and lose interest in going back. But it's also possible that life on Earth is unique. 
That's because our planet was formed thanks to a number of incredible coincidences. The first is the location of our solar system in the galaxy. In the Milky Way, there are constant fireworks of exploding supernovae. The radiation from these explosions destroys everything around it at great distances. Our solar system is right in the sweet spot of the galactic orbit where we're safe from such explosions. Another factor is the Moon. One theory of the formation of the Moon says that about 4.5 billion years ago, a meteorite the size of Mars crashed into us. If the impact had been straight, the Earth would have just broken apart. And if that meteorite had only scratched the Earth, the pieces would have just flown away. But the collision occurred precisely so that part of the meteorite remained in Earth's orbit and formed the Moon. Then, the Moon stabilized the Earth's rotation and heated our core with gravity. Only then, our planet developed a magnetic field, which protects us from the solar wind. Other scientists believe that life outside Earth may be biochemically different. Carbon and water are the basis of our bodies, but carbon could be replaced with silicon or phosphorus, and water could be replaced with ammonia or methane. These atoms could form molecules of different shapes and perhaps assemble into a living organism. Life based on such elements would be unlike anything seen on Earth. What makes space so terrifying is its unpredictability. Even though 99.99% .99 of the cosmos is a vacuum, if you encounter something of substance, the chances are high that it might easily end your life. And still, some things are scarier than others. For example, gamma ray bursts. When a galaxy explodes, it releases a powerful burst of gamma rays and those can completely annihilate any asteroid or planet in their path. A gamma ray burst occurs in our home Milky Way galaxy once every five million years or so. Then there are vampire stars. Scientifically, they're known as O-type stars. Those are enormous blue giants attached to way smaller stars, which gradually get consumed by the gravitational pull of their huge neighbors. But vampire stars don't live long, happy lives. Once a space vampire has consumed a smaller star, it explodes into a supernova torn by its own gravity. Black holes are both endlessly intriguing and terrifying. They consume everything that comes too close and bend space-time around them. Can they get any scarier? Definitely, once we look at rogue black holes. One of them was discovered in 2016. This rogue black hole is heavier than the sun and is moving at a speed of more than 1,240 miles per second. This black hole could have broken away after the collisions of its home galaxy with another one. At the moment, it's around 2 billion light years away from us. Now, how about a mysterious space anomaly called the Great Attractor? This area lies around 150 to 250 million light years away from our galaxy. The Great Attractor's gravitational pull is so powerful that it can move entire galaxies toward itself, making them collapse with one another. But the scariest thing? We still don't know what it is and whether our galaxy will end up in its clutches one day. Meteors might not sound particularly exciting or scary, but they are some of the most realistic threats to our planet. Thousands of meteorites hit Earth every year, Luckily, most of them are too small to cause any serious harm. They either burn in the planet's atmosphere or crash into the ocean. Our own sun can be pretty scary too, especially when it produces powerful bursts of energy. Solar flares. They often go hand in hand with coronal mass ejections. Those are giant bubbles of ionized gas that can accelerate to incredible speeds. The most powerful volcanic eruptions pale in comparison to solar flares that release 10 million times more energy. Within a few minutes, one solar flare can give out billions of tons of charged particles. Solar flares are also insanely hot, with the temperatures reaching several million degrees F astronomers believe that such bursts of solar radiation happen when the sun's magnetic field gets twisted in some regions. At one moment, all the pent-up energy is released. The star sends out light and particles, mostly electrons and protons. Most solar flares last for minutes, but some continue for hours. A powerful solar storm can potentially cause a devastating global blackout on Earth. The next scary space phenomenon is the dark flow. 
All galaxies are supposed to be moving uniformly away from one another. But there's one large group of clusters that seems to be moving at a speed of 600 miles per second toward a small region of space between the constellations Centaurus and Vela. There seems to be no apparent cause for this, which is why this inexplicable phenomenon got its name. The cosmos also presents many dangers for astronauts. For example, extended space travel can apparently change human DNA. According to scientists, the stress from staying in space for too long might cause astronaut cells to rewrite their genetic code. The worst thing is that such DNA changes are permanent. We finally know when Earth will cease to exist. It'll happen when the sun enters its red giant phase. Are we going to survive long enough to witness it all? Let's figure it out. In 5.4 billion years from now, our star, which is a yellow dwarf at the moment, will run out of hydrogen in its core. The sun's core will heat up and become denser, causing the star to grow in size and turn into a red giant. The expanding sun will get so huge that it'll encompass the orbits of Mercury, Venus, and probably Earth. Even if our planet survived being consumed on the spot, it'd still end up so close to the heat of the newly born red giant that it'd scorch our planet. No life would be able to survive there. At the same time, there might be another outcome. As the sun expands, Earth's orbit might change too. You see, when our star reaches the final stages of its stellar transformation, it will lose unimaginable amounts of mass through extremely powerful stellar winds. It'll keep growing and losing mass, making the planets of the solar system spiral outward. So can it help Earth escape its dooming grasp? According to astronomers' calculations, our planet will not survive the expansion of the Sun in any case. By the time our star reaches its largest radius, which is going to be 256 times its current size, it'll be down to a mere 67% of the mass it has now. And the expansion process will be very rapid. The Sun will sweep through the inner solar system in only 5 million years. At one point, it'll enter a short helium burning phase, which will last around 130 million years. During this time, it will expand beyond the orbit of Mercury. After that, the Sun will swallow Venus. By the time our star approaches Earth, it will be already losing as much as 8% of Earth's mass every year. Speaking of our planet's chances, we've got some kind of a good news, bad news situation on our hands. The bad news is that our planet won't be able to live through the expansion of the star. Even if Earth's orbit became 50% more distant from the Sun than it is today, it'd still have no chance. The Sun would engulf our planet even before reaching the peak of its red giant phase. After that, the star would still have half a million years and 0.25 AU to grow. Once Earth is inside the Sun's atmosphere, it will start colliding with particles of gas. Its orbit will begin to decay, and the planet will spiral inward. If Earth was just a bit farther from the Sun right now, at 1.15 AU, it would survive the expansion phase of our star. But what can be considered good news in such a tragic situation? Well, long before the Sun enters this red giant phase, the habitable zone around it will be gone. The heat from the sun will evaporate Earth's oceans and solar radiation will blast away the hydrogen from the water. Devoid of its main source of life, Earth will eventually become molten. It doesn't sound like good news, that's true. But the upside of this situation is that humanity will be bound to leave our planet long before it gets swallowed by the sun. We just won't have a choice. Of course, we can't be sure that some other catastrophic event won't claim us before we have time to colonize some other world. An additional benefit of the changing boundaries of the sun's habitable zone might be the restructuring of the entire solar system. Even though Earth won't be in our star's habitable zone anymore, most of the outer solar system will be. This zone will stretch well into the Kuiper Belt, which means that the formerly icy worlds will melt and liquid water will appear beyond the orbit of Pluto. So maybe that's where our new home will lie. People have always been intrigued by the question of how the world could end. Many theories have been suggested, many ideas debunked, and now 
In the age of science, rather dire predictions come from physics and math. For example, let's take the theory of the Big Rip. It claims that one day, the pull of the expansion of the universe may grow stronger than the force of gravity. The resulting catastrophe will tear apart everything in space, even terrifying black holes. After that, there will be just clouds of single, disconnected particles floating all over the universe. Before this happens, please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Your support is very important to us. Thank you. And now, let's go into detail about this blood-chilling scenario. The cosmological model of the Big Rip is based on the idea that if the universe keeps accelerating in its expansion, it will one day reach the point where all the forces holding it together will be overcome by dark energy. Now let me explain. Everything on Earth and everything people have ever seen in space, with the help of telescopes and other instruments, is normal matter. It's made up of atoms and molecules and adds up to less than 5% of the universe. Around 68% of the universe is dark energy. Astronomers wouldn't even know the thing existed if, several decades ago, they hadn't found out that the expansion of the universe wasn't slowing down. Quite the opposite. It was accelerating. It meant that there had to be some enigmatic force that counteracted gravity. This force was later called dark energy. You might ask, but what about the remaining 27% of the universe? That's what we call dark matter. And it's another thing that confuses astronomers to no end. If dark energy is a force responsible for the expansion of the universe, invisible dark matter is responsible for the way galaxies are organized on grand scales. It is also supposed to explain how objects work together. Potential candidates for dark matter vary from strange particles to super dim objects. If one day the power of dark energy becomes stronger than gravitational, electromagnetic, and weak nuclear forces, the universe is very likely to simply come apart. One of the newest models of the Big Rip theory was published in 2015, and in it, the date when the universe might meet its demise is specified. It's about 22 billion years from now. This hypothesis also says that as the expansion of the universe becomes infinite, its viscosity will decrease. Cosmological viscosity measures how resistant the universe is to expanding and contracting. Eventually, such changes will cause the destruction of the universe. The big rip will happen when dark energy overpowers gravity. At one point, it might become so strong that it will start ripping apart atoms. In other words, if the big rip theory is correct, one day, the world might come to the point where galaxies, stars, planets, and everything on them will be literally torn apart. This view might turn out to be really spectacular if there was anyone left to marvel at it. Powerful forces will break apart atoms and molecules. Electrons will split from atoms all the way down to quarks or even smaller pieces we don't know about yet. And then, everything will cease to exist. The Big Rip isn't the only scary theory about what the end of our universe might look like. Another popular hypothesis is the Big Crunch. It says that one day, the growth of the universe will slow down to a crawl, and then gravity will become the main force. It'll make the universe shrink, causing planets, stars, and galaxies to collide with one another. It'll be the Big Bang in reverse, with everything collapsing in on itself. And let's not forget about another creepy scenario, the Big Freeze. The universe is expanding faster and faster. One day, this growth will pull previously visible galaxies too far away, and we won't see them ever again. Many billions of years later, the universe will turn into a huge, dark, empty, and incredibly cold place with no movement at all.